Welcome on board LATAM's Dreamliner service from Santiago to Lima in business class. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm in Santiago. Suzanne and I need to make our way up to Lima. We're flying with LATAM on a Dreamliner. Join us for this exciting flight. Today's flight will take three hours and 24 minutes to make the 1,524 mile journey. We'll climb as high as 40,000 feet. The ride from Santiago's city center to the airport took only a few minutes because we were leaving so early there was just no traffic. Our flight was scheduled to depart at 10 a.m. and we arrived at the airport at 7.45, giving ourselves more than enough time. We used the extra time to reflect on the incredible experiences we'd had in Chile's Atacama Desert. It's the driest non-polar desert in the world and was the setting for unforgettable hikes, otherworldly scenery, and even an awkward run down a dune. But back in Santiago, we discovered a beautiful, brand new terminal and a reminder that international travel remains confusing these days. Crossing borders has always required an awareness of visas and other requirements, but many nations, including Peru, now require additional forms to be completed. Yesterday we received uh, an email from LATAM saying we didn't have to fill out any forms or any extra paperwork. All we needed was our vaccine cards to check in uh, for Peru, but uh, apparently that changed this morning or else there was some additional training. So we had to uh, uh, fill out a form quickly that set us back a little bit. But now let's head through security and get, uh, get on this plane. The best practice is threefold. First, do your research and bring what you know you'll need. Second, arrive extra early, counting on additional surprises. And third, pack your patience. That process only took about 15 minutes, and um, I guess the form, uh, the form factor, if you will, is just a, uh, an element of, of, of travel during COVID. I mean, uh, this is kind of unpredictable. But uh, we're going to check out the lounge. We've got a few minutes uh, before we board, so let's head up and check it out. Santiago is home to South America's largest lounge, and we were excited to check it out for three main reasons. Coffee, coffee, coffee. You heard it here first. That's the reason we're here. Coffee. <laughs> With a very clear mission in mind, we entered the lounge. It's definitely a, a large space. There's plenty of seating and two large buffets. We walked through the lounge just long enough to find the coffee, of course, and then took a seat. Apparently this lounge has only been open for five days, but it feels really comfortable. It's a pretty nice lounge. But because it was so new, there were still some opening pains. The bartender, for example, wasn't able to use the espresso machine. I'm sure those kinds of things have been worked out by now. Now, the lounge is located very close to security, but pretty far from our gate. And that was C6. Two quick comments. First of all, Juan Valdez Coffee is the best in the world. I know that's controversial. I try to avoid controversy on this channel, but it is. It's just so good. Second comment, this is why I love being an adult. I can have this for breakfast. And after a breakfast that lacked any semblance of nutrition, it was time for the long walk from the lounge to our gate. Along the way, we saw lots of exciting things, like a Dreamliner, similar to the one that'll take us up to Lima. Unfortunately, our gate doesn't offer views of our plane, so I was grateful for this. We also encountered another important component here in the airport. I didn't know the U.S. Embassy was in the Santiago airport. We'd spent so much time in the lounge and cracking myself up with dumb McDonald's jokes that by the time we arrived at the gate, boarding had already begun. I can't remember a time that's ever happened to me, but the lounge was nice and I thought my jokes were funny, so maybe it was worth it. Latam has a new cabin that looks amazing, but no surprise here, we discovered our plane had the older 222 configured cabin. If you're traveling alone, you'll want a seat in the middle to guarantee easy, uninterrupted access to the aisle. Now, it's hard to call business class without all aisle access, anything other than a laggard, but this is absolutely better than the standard 33 configured A320s operating on this route. We went out of our way to book this wide body. On the seats, we found pillows and a blanket. The seats are adjustable. There's a light and a remote down here. There's more storage in front of you. A small size screen. Also, there was an amenity kit we'll take a look at when we get in the air. And of course, the controversial Dreamliner windows. No, you even have lights and an air vent up here. 
And if you don't know your seatmate, you'll find a privacy panel here. But if you do know your seatmate, I recommend keeping that down. There's also a universal socket and USB power source at the seat. If you like these seats, I've got some pretty good news for you. Uh, Delta's taking over some Latam leases on A350s, which means they're incorporating this particular seat design into their A350 fleet. Uh, they're getting some new seat covers, so the colors will be different. But this is going to be uh, part of Delta's fleet to, for at least the near term. We have four ready for departure. Just here, let's make this up on the train. Down flight today to Lima, via one of the means. We're going to turn at the right about all the cars, temperature, and TV circle, 64 degrees on the flight. Taxiing here at Santiago was a bittersweet experience. I loved seeing these wide bodies, but I'm so sorry they're taped up and not flying right now. Once we reached 10,000 feet and the seatbelt sign turned off, I slipped out of my seat to check out the rest of the plane. When Suzanne was sitting, it was easy to get out. The economy cabin is arranged in a 3-3-3 configuration. There's also a mini business class cabin here, which is no doubt quieter than where we were in the larger main part of the business class cabin. Again, this 2-2-2 configuration is anything but industry leading, but these seats do have their advantages. So. I headed back and settled in. There's a table here to the side for drinks or snacks. And the main tray table is sturdy and large enough to eat or work on, but not both at the same time. The amenity kit included the very basics, earplugs, socks, and an eye mask, all you'd really expect on a three hour daytime flight. In-flight entertainment was limited, limited both in the sense that the screen was small and there wasn't too much choice. There was a map though, that was nice. Wi-Fi was not available. Menus were available on boarding and Suzanne chose the hams and cheeses. I picked the omelet. Both were just about what you'd expect on a flight like this. Nothing special, but the fact that they had food available at all, including a hot, hot option, was really nice. That said, our flight departed at 10 in the morning and we didn't get to eat until an hour later at 11. Seems like lunch might have been a more appropriate uh, meal option by this point. At least that's how it would be handled in the U.S. Even though this was a daytime flight, I checked out the bed. The downside of a 222 configured cabin is getting out from the window seat when your seatmate is lying flat. But the upside? It's massively spacious. Even the footwell's roomy. We continue to make our way up the Pacific coast and our descent into Lima's airport would soon begin. So that means it's time for the Jeb score. This unscientific approach is meant to provide an overview of the experience I had on board this one flight. It's not thorough, it's not scientific, it's not precise, but we'll look at the lounge, the seat, the food, the in-flight entertainment, and the service. First, the lounge is nice, the largest in South America, and that's cool but it doesn't have views or anything that really differentiates it from other business class lounges. Four stars here. The seat is roomy, and as long as you're not in the window, it's got everything, including space. And although it's still 222, it's behind the times, it's, it's better than the A320 we could have been on on this route. This is worth three stars. The food was extremely basic, and I was grateful for the hot option, but at this time of day, lunch would have made more sense. Three stars here. The IFE was pretty limited, it's a small screen with limited choices. And I'm not expecting even a ton of English language options here, but just anything there just wasn't much. Two stars here. Finally, the service. It was great. Polished, timely, friendly. Our dedicated flight attendant would have been perfectly in place in, say, Air France La Première. She was great. Five stars here. So that leaves Latam's 787 Dreamliner service from Santiago de Lima with 17 out of 25 stars. I'm sure their new cabin on a longer route would be a completely different experience, and I can't wait to try them out in that way. The 
between now and the next time. See you in the sky.